wonder if that's fixable. Let's find out. Okay, here we have a 2015 or 2017 MacBook Air with pretty extensive liquid damage to the SBI and clock area. This looks pretty nasty. This is pretty bad. I don't know what this is, but it's actually rusting the pads there. It's not pretty. So, let's go ahead and give an overview of the rest of the board to see if we're missing anything. There's some isolated areas of corrosion here, but nothing too, too bad. This looks like it's going to be the main area. Um, even the backlight area, that's really common. That is fine. So it looks like most of our issues are going to be in this one little area. So many of you guys know how we first address li liquid damage, and that is a general cleaning of the area, and we clean with flux. That is going to um, destroy any corrosion that's around here, as well as rejuvenate any solder joints that are broken down from corrosion. This will probably need a new clock chip, as well as some rework to the SPI termination area. The BIOS is probably fine. However, it is pretty corroded, so that may um, end up not being the case. So let's go ahead and uh, do some general leaf flows this area. This little ROM IC right here is probably bad. I believe that's a ROM IC. This resistor is bad. See that? Same with all these guys I don't trust. These can stay. This definitely has to go. Our BIOS, let's lift that. Actually, you know what? No, that could stay. It's pretty liquid. What I mean by that is it's moving back and forth with no issues. This chip's got to go. This has got to go. Let's nudge that back into place. That's good. Notice now we have a big difference in that. It actually looks much cleaner. You could see under this chip where it's actually starting to rust and get broken down. So that definitely needed to go. I don't think that chip was any good. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up with a Q-tip and alcohol. And this resistor under closer inspection, I want that gone. I don't like the looks of that. This pad right here, see this pad right here? This was most likely the cause, one of the causes of no power on this board. Uh, this is going to be for SPI termination. If um, our CPU is not talking to our BIOS through the, these uh, series of resistors, then it will not work because the CPU um, gets its instructions from the BIOS on what to do. Without those instructions, nothing will happen. This is going to be the capacitor for PP3V3 SUS, which is the input voltage to the BIOS, and that does not look very good, so we're going to get rid of that. Um, just knock it off like that and uh, we'll go ahead and start tinning this area and getting it ready for component replacement um, it doesn't look too bad now after uh, reflow of that area the clock chip was also the clock chip is most likely going to be the cause of the no power issue if I had to guess this area doesn't look too bad this chip right here looks okay I think we can get away with that with just a re reflow um, we might actually want to replace it because there is um, a resistor right there that looks pretty bad. We'll see if it works. If not, we'll replace that. Um, so let's go ahead and get some more flux down and start with the cleanup. The cleanup of this area, I should say. The pads and everything. Just kind of want to get away all the um, lead-free stuff and all the corrosion and stuff, and we'll go ahead and wick and then put fresh on.
and that looks decent. So now we could start um, wicking all this area up. I'm not going to wick over here because there's no need, but over here, um, especially the clock chip and some of those resistor traces, I do want to wick. It's not always required, but anytime you have a mix of leaded and lead-free solder, then you should wick away. Um, some areas you could just clear it by um, what I just did on those other pads, just wicking, not wicking, um, just adding leaded solder to the area. That could sometimes take care of it. It's okay if you scrape away some of the conformal coating that I did right there. It's perfectly fine. It's not going to hurt a thing. If it makes you feel better, you can always put some of the green conformal coating that you've seen in these videos, but it's really not needed. Looks like this pad was actually pretty corroded on the clock chip. It's hard to see because of the flux. It's even hard for me to see through the scope. I'm just going to scrape. And that's better. That'll make a good contact. No worries there. And that should be good to solder. So let's go ahead and start um, putting our resistors back on. We need a 8200165 donor board. I'm going to start with our SPI termination resistors right there. Missed one, it flew off the tweezers, so I'll come back for that one in a second here. That is soldered. We're going to go ahead and clean up those uh, little solder blobs on the edges here. Super common when uh, soldering QFN chips. Super easy to solve too. Just get your iron. Let it get hot enough. And done. That's all you have to do if you get those little blobs. I'm going to add a little bit more here should be good. We'll go ahead and replace that chip now. I'm 
Different lettering, same chip. And I lost that resistor again. What fun is that? That one resistor must not like me at all. Or just bitter about being on a MacBook, one of the two. Let's go ahead and see what value that is. Is it 24.9 which is the same as this one up here So this is done over here. Now we got to move on to right here. Looks like we have one resistor. And a cap. That's all set. Let's give it a few seconds to cool down and then we'll go ahead and test it and see if we get power. I think we will. I think this was a pretty easy one. Um, actually, let's take care of these two resistors because these don't look the healthiest. They're probably fine, but I don't like to leave stuff like that on board, so we'll take care of it. Okay, now we'll let it cool down for a minute. Okay, here's our fan. Plug it in. Give it a second. And that is a spinning fan. And it's staying spinning too, so it's not quarter fan spinning, perfectly normal. Let's go ahead and uh, test it in the enclosure and see if we get boot and image. All right, it's plugged in. We have a spinning fan. Let's wait for post. All right, the screen just turned on. It's probably hard to see. And we have an Apple logo. Let's see if it boots. The fans are going to run fast because I have the trackpad unplugged and the I.O. board unplugged, all the non-essential stuff. And look at that. It boots. It is a fixed MacBook. So thank you for watching. Again, hope this video helps you solve your problem.